In this video, I'm gonna show you five techniques to use in Lightroom that I'm sure you don't know and you've never used that will change your life. I will show you this technique from the least important to the most important, so make sure you stay until the end. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramy. I'm a photographer from the incroyable, the amazing city of Paris, France, and my work is in over 120 galleries around the world. Hey, Sam, can you stop bragging and just give us the tips? Yes, of course, let's do it. Technique number five, how to pick your best photo really fast. I see so many people in the workshop that I do spend days, months, trying to find the best photo. I'm gonna show you something that I do every day that will speed up your workflow. So this is a shoot that I did with my daughter, Maureen, and uh, there's a lot of photo, over 178 photo. So as the photo import, what I do is I just go through the photo, and if I see a photo that I think has potential, I give it a one. So this one, I'm gonna give it a one and I go through all my photos and I find the ones that I think have a potential. And you know, this one is kind of cool, this one is kind of cool. And you will see I try different lighting and I just go through really fast. And if I think it has potential, I give it a one. But that's just one first pass, especially when you have a lot of photos like this. So you see, this was a completely different light setup. This one, I'm gonna give it a one. This is Alexander who was posing for me as my guide. Okay, and then I think here, yeah, I started back here. I tried so many different lighting on this one. Okay, I like this one. Yeah, that's a better lighting. So I think I'm gonna get one, one. No, no, one, one. And you go through like this, one, that's kind of cool. Ooh, if, and if there's one that I really like, I give it right away a two. This one, I really give it a two. I absolutely love it. And I go through like this really fast. So let me do this very, very fast. Okay, so when I, once I got through all the ones, what I do is I go to my filter here and I go to rated and I take one. And now out of 178 photos, I got 30 photos. And then I play something that I call the Highlander game. So what I do is I select about four or five photo and then I press N on my keyboard, which is gonna be the survey mode and for survey, believe it or not, and then shift tab. So you see now I got like five photos with the same lighting. And what I do is I usually look at the one which is the best. So I think this one is better out of the, uh, of the, of the five and I give it a two, okay? And then I press shift tab again and take the next five one and I go five by five like this. And I'm like, I think uh, if I were only to pick one out of this thing, I think I would pick this one. No, this one, because she's looking at the camera, two. And you can also say, okay, this one, two. Why not, you know, shift tab again. And then I continue and I take the next five one. Make sure you press shift tab. And then I'm like, ooh, I like her look there. She's funny. And maybe this one, I already gave a two on this one. So, okay, let's carry on. And then let's take the next five one, shift tab. Or oh, four one, actually, let's go for five. Well, let's go for six. I want to show you a really cool trick. Now I got six photo and I'm like, uh, for example, let's say this one I really don't like because she's looking outside. So I can press the X key. Now I've got only five. And you can also do it that way where like, oh, I kind of don't like this one. She doesn't look nice there. Uh, this one, she looks like too sleepy. Uh, this one, she looks like too condescending. Uh, and then this one, okay, this one is really the best. This one, I don't like the look. Okay, so this one is going to be my two. And the idea is you go through like this, five by five, and, um, and it goes really fast, you know, to go like this, five by five. I kind of like, I like this one, I'm gonna give it a two, this one I'm gonna give it a two, uh, and voila. And then this one, the last four, I think this one I'm gonna give it a two. It's not an ad for cigarettes, but anyway, I thought it was fun to play with cigarettes. And now I go back here and I can filter by two. And now in a very short time, I've located, uh, well, this one's definitely not a two. I'm gonna take this one out. But I've located like eight photo of 178 that I wanna retouch, which I think are really cool and can really work uh, really well. And that's why I love the star system. Hey, son, I don't understand why you're using the star system and not using the pick or the color system. What's going on here? 
No problem, I understand. I just find it a lot more convenient to use the star system than the other one. Technique number two, how to create AI presets to retouch really fast your portrait. So I'm gonna show you something really cool. Uh, you know, I always wanna make this, the skin better and everything better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a one AI preset and then I'm gonna apply the preset to all my photos in one click. And it's gonna retouch everything in one go. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to people and that's gonna use a new AI feature, which is gonna detect that there is a person, my daughter, and I'm gonna retouch first. You see, you can choose the facial skin, the body skin, the eye brown, the eyes, cell around inside the eyes, iris and pupil, lips, hair, and clothes. So I just wanna do a basic retouching, so I'm gonna take the facial skin and the body skin, and I'm gonna create a mask, and I'm gonna call it skin, okay? By double clicking on the name. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a bit of exposure on the skin and I'm gonna add a lot of minus clarity, especially on a, on a woman, it makes the skin glow. Look at this, before, after. Much brighter, much more glow in the skin, which I like. Maybe I went a little too strong on the exposure, okay? Then I'm gonna go and go back to select people, click on her again, and this time I'm gonna do the, um, maybe the eyes cell wrap, okay? Which is inside of the eyes. And create a mask and I don't, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna call it eyes. And then on the eyes, Celera, I just wanna add a little bit of exposure just to make them pop a bit, okay? And then I'm gonna continue like this. Select people, person number one, and iris and purple, okay? Create a mask and I'm gonna call it iris. Iris. Okay, and on this one, I think I wanna add a bit of clarity on the iris to make it pop. Uh, a little bit of sharpness and a little bit of clarity. You won't see much, but it does something if you print this photo in big, you will see. And let's carry on, let's do select people. Uh, what else can we do? Let's do lips, okay? And I'm gonna call that lips. So, uh, oh, where did I go? Uh, hold on. I think I made a mistake, okay. And I'm gonna go lips and create mask, okay? And let's call this one lips. Okay, and on the lips, all you do is add a bit of saturation to make the red pop even more. Very good. And then last one, I think I wanna do the hair, so select people. And then I'm gonna go for the hair, create mask. I'm gonna call it hair, okay? And then on the hair, I think I wanna add a little bit of exposure and I wanna add a curve where I'm gonna do like a bit of an S curve on the air to uh, give them a little bit more. So now I have the iris. You can see the before after, you don't see much. The eye, uh, look at this. The eyes, you can see a lot. Look at the eyes before and after, they're much brighter. The skin, look at the skin, the difference. Huge on the skin. And the hair, look at the difference on the hair. And then the lips, look at the difference on the hips. Okay, it's just more, more saturated. So now I can go here and I can create a preset that I'm gonna call Marine. And you see by default, all the mask is off. I'm gonna say record all the mask because it's a lot of work. And check this out. Now I can take the next photo and in one click, I can go to Marine and boom. And it's gonna redo all the mask for that photo. I can even select the next five, click on synchronize, synchronize everything and now you see, because it's using AI, it's gonna detect the face, detect the lips, and correct this on every photo in one click. Look at that. You see, it's already retouched everything. I can click reset. Look at this. Look at this thing before, after. The skin is retouched, the eyes is retouched. All right, all right, all right. Don't you think the AI is gonna seal all our jobs as photographers? No, I think it's gonna help photographer create even more. It's amazing. Hey Fox, don't forget to subscribe to this kid's YouTube channel. He's got some amazing videos coming up on landscape photography. You don't want to miss this one. Just hit the subscribe button. I promise you, love it. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Amazing. Oh, and by the way, I'm giving you all this preset. I've got, I created a whole bunch of preset here for your portrait. You think this AI techniques where you can even change a color, you can make them black and white. There's some really cool Hollywood preset you want to try. It's all free, it's under this video. Technique number three, how to organize your photo while traveling. This one is crazy. Little story time. 
When I used to travel, I have a MacBook Pro and I take photos and I retouch on the go -kart. I don't want to wait like two weeks before to see my photos. I retouch the same night. But the problem what I used to do, I don't know if you're in that case, is I used to do all that retouching like on a local Lightroom catalog. And then I would come home and I would just take my SD card and re-import everything on my main computer and re-retouch everything. Double work, completely useless. This is what I do now. When I travel, I just travel to Iceland, Paris, Italy, all over the place. What I do is I have a local catalog where the file is on my local hard drive. Then I do all my retouching on the go, but I import all my photo, let me show you. So what I do, I'm here on my laptop, and this is for example a, a photo shoot that I did in Paris. What I do is I, I import everything into a specific photo called travel. Okay, so if you look at this photo and I show it in your finder, you will see that this photo, this photo is in a folder called Serge Ramelli, travel photos, and then you have the day 2023, 230504 and then you have that date, okay? And everything is like this. So every photo is in that travel photo folder, but that travel photo folder is on my Dropbox, okay? And so I can retouch my photo and when I'm done retouching my photo here, like if I done some retouch, what I do is I select everything the entire day and I right click and I go to metadata and save metadata to file. What that's gonna do is that it's gonna write into a separate file all the metadata, okay? So now because that folder, you see, I've got Dropbox active here. That folder is also on my main desktop. And so if I go to my main desktop, okay, so I'm back on my desktop. And what I do is I have the same travel photo folder there. It's the same one. And I right click and I just click on synchronize the folder. Okay, once I've synchronized the folder, what that's gonna do is that it's gonna import the photo. I've already done this. So you see all the photos are now on my desktop and to make sure that I get back all the retouching, I control A everything and I, re uh, and I right click metadata and this time I click read metadata. And if you do that right, you will get all the photos and all the retouching back exactly as it is. And then once, the good thing is that, let's say that I'm on my laptop, let me show you back on my laptop. Okay, I'm back on my laptop. And now what's gonna happen if you do that, because I'm using my internal SSD, at one point this is gonna get, okay, meaning there won't be enough space. But that's the cool trick about this. Everything that I import has been backed up to Dropbox and it's been automatically sent to my main desktop. What I can do to save space is I can just go into the finder here. I can, I'm in my Dropbox and I can select, for example, all of this, well, I already done this, but the one that's in grid is still locally on my hard drive and the one that's with a little gray out is only in the cloud. So what I can do is I can just select this two, right click and I can say, make available, make online only. And by doing that, it's gonna take them out of my laptop here, but it's still gonna be referenced in my, in my Lightroom. I just won't be able to access the file but at least I'm gonna free up. And that's how I do it to basically retouch all my photos. And because I have this Dropbox folder that's on my laptop and on my desktop, that way I don't need an external hard drive. I never lose a file because I back up every time that I save my file. My files are backed up every time I import them. I never lose a file. I've been using for two, three years. It's amazing. Hey, stop promoting Dropbox. Are you getting paid for this, son? No, I am not being sponsored by Dropbox, but I would love to. If you're working at Dropbox, contact me. Technique number two, how to create collection and get them on your phone. So many people don't know how to get your best collection from Lightroom onto the phone automatically. Let me show you. Let's say for uh, example, this is a two star photo. Let's say I want to create a collection of Marine. And what I can do is I can just select the, 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 the photo and I can go here to collections. And for example, I can create first a collection set. So let's create a collection set called Portrait, for example. And what that is, is that it's a collection that contains collections, it's a collection set. And now I can create a new collection called Marine, and I'm gonna put it inside the collection set called Portrait, which is here. I have a lot of collections, so it might be a bit confusing for you, but you can see now, if I go here, you see, this is all my collection set. I've got a collection called Portrait and inside I have Marine. Okay, so I use the same technique to create something called Adobe Website and you will see because I'm gonna show you how to create a free website using your Lightroom photography plan, what you're already paying for Photoshop and Lightroom. You can get a website for free. I'm gonna show that. So you see here, I created four collections. Italy Best, Landscape Web, Los Angeles Web, New York Web and Paris Web. So some of my best Paris photo, New York photo, Los Angeles photo, web photo. And all of that is in a collection set called Adobe Website. Now, very important, you see that little sign here? 
If you click on that, if you take it off, if you click it, it's going to synchronize this with Lightroom. Now, we are using Lightroom Classic. Lightroom is a different software, which is this one. And that software is the same that is on, you can see we've got Italy Best, Landscape Best, Los Angeles Web, and your Best. Paris is not there yet because it didn't synchronize yet, but that's fine for the demonstration. So what's amazing is because I created a collection and I clicked on this little thing, that little thing, now if I go to my phone, if I go to Lightroom, see if I go to Lightroom, you can see here I've got the same collection, New York Web with all my photos of New York. I can go here, Los Angeles Web, all my Los Angeles photos, Landscape Web, and all my best landscape, and it's coming up in real time. And so it's a great way for me to showcase my work to anybody in two seconds. And if I add anything to that collection here, automatically it's going to go on my phone from now on. Isn't that crazy? Does this also works for Android? Because not everybody's got an iPhone. Mais bien sûr, mon ami, it works everywhere on Android, on iPhone. As long as you have Lightroom Mobile, you're good to go. Technique number one, and the most important of all, how to create a website for free using your photography plan of Lightroom and Photoshop. Now that you have collections, let me show you. All right, so now you see all these collections here, as I told you, they transferred automatically into Lightroom, okay? I repeat, this is Lightroom Classic, and this is Lightroom. I know it can be confusing, and you can see here, I got different collections. So my landscape, my Los Angeles photo, and my best New York photos, all right? Now, I wanna make this into, that's why I called it Adobe Web, into a website. So you, what you do is you right click, click Share to Adobe Portfolio, and that's gonna launch a website. By the way, make sure you get a copy of my Lightroom Natural Drama. This will help you get the best of your work file, plus you get two weeks of free coaching from me. So it takes you to these pages. And if you click here, basically you got pages and I have a full tutorial on how to do this in a much more in-depth uh, link is under this video. But basically here, well, because I did it twice, they, they will appear here, but you, you, you need to select, this is all, a whole bunch of collections that I've synchronized to create a website. But you can, I, I all, only want the landscape web, the Italy best, New York, Los Angeles, and then it, Landscape Web is the name that I gave to my collection, but if it's going to appear like this on the web, you don't want that. So you can right click and you can, you can just uh, rename, you can edit page title. I'm going to call it just Landscape. You see now it's called Landscape. Let's go to New York. New York is on. I can see New York is there. And basically you're going to see all the collection and you just select the one you want them to appear on your website. Okay. And you have an, uh, an about me section that you can, about me that you can click on and I've already done it. I put like all my links of my galleries, everything is there. I mean, it's, it's a very basic website, but it's free and it's pretty good. And you also have a contact page you can click on. Again, watch the full tutorial if you want to do that, you just, you know, name, address, blah, blah, blah. And it's a very basic website, but it takes two seconds. And what's amazing is, is that it's in real time, you see? And uh, I have, this is my Italy best work. And then I can go here to my New York and you got my next photo and you have my landscapes. And it's a really cool website. You can check it out, photosearch.net. I created this in real time for this tutorial. And now what's amazing is that if I can go, if I go here and I change any of these photos, automatically it will synchronize on Lightroom. It's gonna change here automatically and it's gonna change on my phone and on my website. So it's a really cool way to do this. All right guys, please do me a big favor and if you like this kind of content, give it a good like. Make sure you get my Lightroom book and make sure you download the presets. Link is under the video and that you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching. Damn, that's cool.